Britain may be peaceful today, but we live in a country forged by centuries of warfare. Over the past 2,000 years, Britain has been invaded and occupied. It has defeated superpowers. It's been ripped apart by internal conflict. And united by common cause. In this new series, my son Dan and I are going to be examining battles that have shaped the country we live in today. We're going to take you from the highlands of Scotland to the south coast of England. From the rivers of Ireland to the mountains of Wales. I'll be following the fortunes of the ordinary people who were caught up in the chaos and terror of conflict. I saw some things that day that I don't think I ever want to see again in my lifetime. You didn't think of them as humans. I thought by God's hand this day was my last. And I'll be giving the view from the front line what it was like for the men and women who rode, marched, sailed and flew into battle. And I'll be analysing how the strategies of the best and the worst commanders determine the fate of the British Isles. These 2,000 years of conflict began with one of the most vicious wars in Britain's history. It's a tale of destruction, slaughter and revenge. And it was triggered by the wrath of one woman who rose up against Rome's occupation of Britain. Boudicca, Queen of the Iceni. In 60 AD, much of Britain was in the hands of the greatest superpower the world had ever seen. The country had been invaded by the armies of the Roman Empire only 17 years earlier. Their vast military might had quashed the disparate British tribes, and despite pockets of resistance, most were now under Roman control. To enforce their rule, the Romans had stationed four of their best legions in Britain. In the spring of AD 60, we think one was based in Lincoln, one in Exeter, and two up near the Welsh border. These legions were disciplined and efficient fighting machines second to none, and they were under the command of a new and ruthless governor, Suetonius Paulinus. No one knows exactly what Paulinus looked like. But he had a reputation for being a fearsome military commander. He was probably in his 50s, with the short hair of a Roman aristocrat and the face of a soldier who'd spent 20 years at war. His mission in Britain was to crush any last resistance to Roman rule. What the Romans saw as civilizing the barbarians looked to the Britons like total oppression. The Romans had seized their land and taken over their towns and forced them to pay heavy taxes to support the roads, forts and settlements which had a stranglehold on their country. Our job is to beat civilization into the Britons. They give us grain, we give them civilization. Like it or not. The people of ancient Britain were second-class citizens in their own country. 
Paulinus and his oppressive regime controlled their land, their money, their weapons, and their freedom. He's trying to change us, change the way we live, change the way we work, change everything we do. I mean, they were bleeding us dry. We had nothing left. They took everything from us. But even this wasn't enough for the ambitious Paulinus. He was determined to wipe out any last remnants of dissent in every tribe in Britain. And to do this, he made a fateful decision to strike at the very heart of British culture. Paulinus took two of his best legions to wage war on the Britain's religious leaders on the Isle of Anglesey. Known as the Isle of Mona, it was a sacred site and last bastion of the country's most influential group. They were a group who gave some kind of spiritual unity to the British tribes, and they were fiercely anti-Roman. They were the Druids. Even the kings had to bow their heads to the Druids. They could tell you everything. They knew everything. The Romans were scared of them. They knew they'd got to get rid of them. And so, that's what they did. In 60 AD, Paulinus led his heavily armed troops across the water to Anglesey. The Roman infantry landed on this beach in a flotilla of flat-bottomed boats, whilst the cavalry rowed or swam across the gap. Then, with thousands of troops massed on this shore, they were given the order to move forward and attack the Druids. The soldiers drove the Druids off the beach and stormed into their sacred groves where the Druids had tried to hide. We hunted them like the dogs they are. And we enjoyed it too. And we cut them down. And we didn't leave a man alive. Every single druid dead. were massacred and their sacred groves razed to the ground. The annihilation of their priesthood was an act of brutality that reverberated throughout the British tribes. Our whole essence centred round the Druids and they killed them. We had nothing left. Our contact with the gods was gone. Rome hadn't just defeated the ancient Britons, it had humiliated them and abused their gods. Paulinus must have thought he had them on their knees. He was wrong. One woman was about to challenge Roman supremacy in Britain. For centuries, she was known as Queen Boadicea. Despite her iconic status, surprisingly little is known about her. She appears in the writings of just two Roman historians. Even the name Boadicea is wrong. The mistake dates back to when the manuscript was incorrectly copied by hand 500 years ago. In the original text, her name is Boudicca. The other text describes her as a tall, terrifying redhead and says that she was unusually clever for a woman. We know that Boudicca was married to Prasutagus, king of the Iceni tribe. Their kingdom was here, in Norfolk and Suffolk, bounded to the south by the tribal lands of the Trinovantes in today's Essex. Whereas the Trinovantes 
were completely subjugated by Rome, Prasutagus and Boudicca had managed to hold on to their kingdom by agreeing a treaty with Rome. It means Boudicca didn't start off as the barbarian warrior queen of popular mythology. She was, in fact, a Roman collaborator. Boudicca's capital, the center of the Iceni kingdom, is thought to have been in the Norfolk town of Thetford. These fortifications are all that remains of her capital today. The people who lived here 2,000 years ago were warriors. Fighting prowess was prized above anything else. But with their king and queen in league with the Romans, the people had to endure an uneasy peace. Until in the spring of AD 60, events were to give them a chance to show their true feelings. That spring, Boudicca's husband, King Prasutagus, fell seriously ill. For years, he'd been Rome's ally, but he was worried that when he died, the Romans would seize his kingdom. In a bid to buy his way out of this, he made a will that left half his entire wealth to Rome and half to his family, in the hope that Boudicca would be allowed to stay queen. Prasutagus was right to be worried. When he died, his will was brutally ignored. The Roman soldiers were ordered to move in and seize his throne. come to get some more taxes. But this time it was very different. people around. They took everything they could lay their hands on. Grain, money, slaves, even the fodder. But that wasn't all they were after. They were after the girls and the women. They took Queen Boudicca, took her to one side, took the two girls with them as well. They whipped her, tied her to a post in the middle of the village and whipped her till the blood ran down her back. And then they got her daughters, one aged 10 and one aged 12, and they raped them. It's bad enough seeing your queen dishonoured in that way. But to see those two girls hurt in that way, it's disgusting. For Romans, barbarian women and girls were mere chattels to be freely abused. For the Roman soldiers, this sickening act would have meant very little. But for the Britons and for Boudicca, it was an obscene insult against both innocent children and against the British royal family. Boudicca's reaction was like any parents would be. She wanted revenge. <laughs> 